I'm not gonna bullshit anybody here. I'm going to teach you how to cheat at this. If you're a beginner especially, you're gonna like having some help because not everyone can do the color wheel and complementary colors thing, myself included. But you can learn how to apply what colors work and what don't when you work within yourself on your art and your style. So with that, a couple rules, and then I get to be all sneaky sneaky, but not really. This isn't some huge thing unless you're gonna be an asshole. And if you are, please go away. I'm not telling you this for people to be awful about it. Okay, now for the rules. One, don't use this for art you're planning to sell or make money on. This is for art you're making for yourself or practicing with. And two, I'm gonna use all of these examples in the context of digital art, but you can absolutely do this with traditional mediums as well, like markers, pastels, colored pencil, paint, etc. Okay, here we go. How to cheat at making color palettes so you make good art. I will be using some of them during this video to give the class a demonstration. Here we go. First, we have eyeshadow palettes. This is easy, this is fast. This is how I started practicing making my own palettes and it's quite frankly the most accessible way, I think. Eyeshadow palettes are designed with lots of thought and effort going into what colors work together, what can and can't work unless you are some people. And they are awesome for starting to understand what colors and hues can go into a piece since makeup is art as well. If you want to use eyeshadow for a color palette, simply search for them on your search engine of choice. For instance, if you're doing a monochromatic piece, look at the color and then eyeshadow palette, or if you want something for drawing, I don't know, mushrooms with a frog underneath, try nature eyeshadow palettes or anything that suits the vibe you're going for. Next, we're gonna talk about brand items and packaging. Again, this is why I am telling you do not sell your shit. Brands spend days, weeks, and millions on what products should look like so people will find them appealing. Using labels or packaging colors as a start for what colors you want to use is a good way to learn what you do and don't like in making your own art. And remember, no infringement on big business. Cannot stress that enough. We're also going to talk about household items. If you see something in your home that has colors you like or want to copy, take a picture in good lighting and color match it. There's a lot of creativity waiting for you, it just hasn't been found yet. And finally, skin tones and color palettes. A lot of debate happens over if tones used to color skin in art are correct. And usually skin comes out gray or too orange because of incorrect color matches or just frankly the artist not caring. There are some ways to hopefully avoid this or start drawing better skin. One, there are skin tone marker kits and color pencil sets. And just like the eyeshadow palettes, screenshot or save a photo and go from there, adjusting as needed since color matching can be weird sometimes. It goes gray or too orange and you have to correct it. Sometimes you do have to fix things. I don't know what to tell you there. Two, look up foundation sets. Some ranges are not the best, but that's also an option for learning how to start coloring skin. Drawing skin well and shading it is also a lot of practice, so if you feel it looks wrong, try going the opposite direction with what colors you use to do shadows. Like if you went for a warmer tone, go for blues and see if that helps. And if you're doing this traditionally, I suggest getting the Sharpie marker set or the colored pencil one. They are pretty good. And again, remember, skin isn't perfect. Skin is meant to have imperfections. So if you're looking at it and going, it looks off, odds are it is. It's not meant to look flawless. That's something that's heavily edited. There's also the nifty trick of throwing a very light transparent layer of one color over the entire drawing to make all the colors cohesive. You can also do this if you feel it looks a little clashy and you wanna even it out. A really quick thing you can do. These are some basic starting points for learning how colors work in general and how to use them in your art, especially as a beginner or even beyond that. I hope this was helpful to someone today and see all you awesome humans around. Bye-bye.